It is a day of celebration. 31 years in the making. The Mavericks coming home champs. Welcome to News 8 Live from Victory Park. I'm John McKay. And a I'm few Kelly words Slater. to describe we'll my career. Fun, challenging, exciting. Police here tell us that on average they'll find at least one counterfeit parking placard every day at DFW Airport. This job, whether you're disabled, in front of the camera or behind the camera, if you're out in the field, this is a front row seat to life. People keep arriving here at the hospital. This woman here is in critical condition. Doctors need to amputate her right arm. If they don't do it, she will die. Right now, she's on a waiting list for an emergency room. In Haiti, honestly, I cried after I came back from Haiti. But it, at that moment, when you're in it, you just you have to stay. You have to stay focused. When I was in high school, I lived overseas. I lived in Spain. We didn't we didn't have television, and uh, I listened to the radio. And I was always fascinated by the newspaper and fascinated by information. Uh, so I was first interested in two things: radio news and also in filmmaking. Uh, but in those days, if you were doing filmmaking, you pretty much know where you could go. Uh, so that was just about out. So when I went to college, I was interested more in radio than television, but I had moved back to the United States and there became interested in television journalism. A lot of streams of information come into a newsroom. One is email coming from people who have events that are going on, phone calls from people. Everybody who's in a newsroom comes in with information that they have that people have called and given them that information. So they put that in a central file in the computer for that day. In the morning, people will go by and take a close look at that. Also, we'll take a look at what's going on in terms of local events that we're aware of that we might find out in, say, a newspaper. Uh, we will also take a very close look at things that may have happened last week that we know have to be updated, new information, changes in stories that we may have done the day before, new bits of pieces about a new story. All those things come together, I think, for us to determine exactly what it is we're going to be putting on the broadcast. Got some breaking news. Texas Governor Rick Perry takes another step toward a run at the White House. His key political advisors say they are beginning to lay the ground. One of the challenges is to keep up with the, the technology. That's one challenge. The other challenge is because there are so many information sources, that doesn't mean that they're all the right sources. The information is out there, but what we're looking for are things that are, are not just accurate, but that they're told in a way that they're the complete truth. And that's an even bigger challenge when you have as many information sources as we have today. Tonight, another North Texas family family knows what that boy's family is going through. They the stories that fascinate me the most are stories that have to do with people. Uh, people who are changed or people who go out of their comfort zone to make a difference. Uh, I'm thinking of a woman who uh, was very poor, but she went in her own car with her own guests and once a week uh, gave out food to other people who were probably in worse shape than she was, but she believed that was the right thing to do. So those are the kinds of things that, that keep me going. The city says the higher prices actually factor in things like transportation, overhead, and disposal fees. I decided to become a reporter back in the, uh, in the 80s growing up. We got a video camera when I was a kid, and a buddy of mine, uh, he and I used to go out and, and uh, play with the video camera. So I liked it. I like current events. I like being at the action where things are going on. So I decided I want to get into journalism. I was a, a, a news photographer for about a year in Nashville and decided that uh, I liked it better on the other side of the camera where I could actually ask the questions. So I've been reporting, I've uh, been in TV for 21 years and been reporting for about 16. All right, here we go, man. Three, two, one. Though he hasn't played for Pinkston High in a year, Jared Williams got the game ball from Thursday night's matchup with Molina. The hardest thing about being exactly. a reporter, well, especially ago, in, in a city the size of Dallas or Houston, player. is coming up with your own story ideas. At Channel 8, there's a policy in place that you can't have a story idea that somebody else has already done, that's already aired on another channel, that's been in the newspaper or anywhere else. So it's up to us to find our own original story ideas out in the community. Once you get the story idea, then you have to make sure it's visual enough to put on TV. And sometimes that's a challenge, finding visuals to go with stories. You might have a great story and might not have the pictures to go with it. So you have to sometimes kind of come up with video to match that story. Encore doesn't dispute this neighborhood here has had a run of bad luck. 
For 21 years in, in TV news, there's, there's been a lot of things I've, I've been able to do. Uh, one of the most fun things uh, I've gotten was access to ride in the back of a limousine back in the 90s with Hillary Clinton when she came to, uh, to Tennessee uh, during one of the campaigns. That was kind of cool. I got my own Secret Service agent uh, to kind of make sure I got out of the way, basically, but uh, I had someone assigned to me. That was fun. Uh, Oklahoma City was, was kind of tough to cover when that bombing happened. Uh, in the mid 90s. Uh, been able to cover hurricanes, wildfires, and different things like that. Just fascinating to see nature's fury as well. Debbie, we're live on Old Denton Highway and Watauga Drive, and just take a look at the ground. You can see. Some I always of the wanted snow. to be a reporter at first. I wanted to be in working in a newspaper, and then when I got to school, I took my first TV classes in college, and, uh, and then I knew right there um, I wanted to be a television journalist. I went to school, of course, to Florida State, and um, I studied communications. And from there, that's, you know, I got my first job out of TV, you know, behind the scenes and uh, worked at a television station at WSVN um, in Miami, Florida. Worked behind the scenes for about two years writing. And so, and then from there, I got my first reporting job at Telemundo in San Jose, California. Our day's pretty much, it starts early. Uh, my shift starts at 2.15, but I'm already working on some of my pitches for the story meeting. I'm already up early, uh, calling sources, checking, reading the newspaper, um, reading some online sites, um, and then just trying to call people in the community I know to see what's going on. So that's how I come up with some of the story ideas. The station will sometimes send us some ideas that come in from the public, and then we'll research those before we come into work. Okay, going out. Okay. Okay. At sunset, more families desperate for medical care arrive at the gate. I think one of the most memorable stories I've covered is when I went to Haiti right after the earthquake, and, and that was just one of those stories um, that really just touched my heart, and uh, the images were so powerful, and just to see how the Haitian people, their spirit, and um, in the, in, in, while they're dealing with something so tragic, it was just really an amazing, an amazing trip. I'm John McKay. Today, Dallas City leaders unanimously approved a new budget worth nearly two billion. Any time you're exposed to new people, you visit new people, you go to new places. What that does is it allows you to see what what really is true, as opposed to what you think is true based upon what you either read or seen or that sort of thing. And so, when you spend your life comparing those kinds of things together, it leaves you with the thought that you have to always be open-minded and always aware of the fact that not necessarily is everything what it seems to be. Uh, and there's always something new out there that you can learn, no matter how old you are. General H. Jason Whiteley reports why the principal has now backed down. At Western Hills High School... This business has changed a lot, at least in the last five years. Five years ago, you'd do a story, uh, go out and produce a story, and you would basically have to produce it uh, for on-air and sometimes you had a, a, a mission of having to produce it for the internet as well, which write it in, in print form for the web. Today, it's not only write it for on air, uh, produce it in print form for the web, then you have to post it on Facebook, either on your page or the station's page. Uh, they want you to tweet about it sometimes during the day and, and do other forms of social media, whether, whether it's Instagram or something else like that. You're constantly producing or promoting your story um, it seems like all the time these days with uh, the way journalism is changing. Yuzay has learned that the manager works at a Monte restaurant. Investigators say there was no criminal intent that they went ahead and filed a false alarm report. I think journalists now, they have to prepare themselves and learn everything they can about the business. For, they have to be shooters, they have to be editors. Um, both styles of print and broadcast, uh, learning how to write in both of those styles. There's so much going on that you have to know a little bit of everything because now we're seeing more journalists are becoming backpack journalists and they're doing that. They're doing it from the field off of a computer. So my best advice is as far as the the changes that we're seeing in the industry is stay, try to stay ahead of the technology. And if something is new, be the first one in there in your newsroom. I want to learn this. 
and of course keep on doing the traditional stuff. You have to go to City Hall if that's your beat and see what's going on. You have to be involved in the community to get some of those stories. And you have to keep on reading, I think, the newspapers as well and, and being informed. I think the traditional things that you need to do to be a good journalist, that you still have to do. But that I think that technology has just added a new uh, requirement now that you have to just stay on top of all of what's uh, going on. Get ready for a color explosion in Dallas this weekend. Dallas Forget about working 40 hours a week. If you don't want to be here, if you don't want to do this, you're, you're not going to be able to do it. And, and if anything, the pace is even faster now than before. I, I used to have to wait to, for deadlines. Six o'clock news, 10 o'clock news. Now the news can be anytime you can get it on the internet. So, if anything, the, the pace is much faster now than, than before. Roanoke firefighters took these air quality devices into the nearby neighborhood over here, checking to see whether all the smoke might mean they have to evacuate homes. Sometimes it's tough to be passionate on uh, when you're standing out in the middle of a hurricane or something like that. But this job, whether you're in front of the camera or behind the camera, if you're out in the field, this is a front row seat to life. Uh, broadcast journalism is. If you work for a newspaper or magazine or do a blog, a lot of times you have to work from the desk. Um, in broadcast journalism, you get to get out and meet people and see places and uh, witness events that everyone else has to watch about on TV or read about in the newspaper. So bottom line is, this is a front row seat to life. That's why I enjoy it and I hope I will for another 10, 15 years to come. Person, I think it just makes me appreciate more all of the blessings that I have in my life. Uh, families allow us into their homes in their darkest hours at times and um, you just appreciate more no um, what the good things that you have in your life and you appreciate life more. In Dallas, Monica Diaz, Channel 8 News. John, right now Apple has not given a specific cause of death for Steve Jobs. We do know the 56-year-old died at home peacefully with family at his side. He dropped out of college and worked for the video game maker Atari in the 1970s and at Apple he was described as a perfectionist who demanded greatness from everyone. Steve Jobs was a Buddhist and half Syrian, many didn't know, on his father's side. 56 year old is survived by his mother, a sister, and his wife, from along with four children. Reporting live, Jason White, the channel. Thanks. Thanks.